happy with the status quo. This slide I used many years back, and it showed up in a lot of Silicon Valley slides, so I don't know if this is because of sharing it on SlideShare now. It's used latest by a company called Marketo. I know Sanjay Dhalokia used this slide, so I was kind of wondering, it's a matter of pride that people are copying our slides now. So I'm sure many of you will not agree with this, but if you are, if you are happy with the status quo, then it's okay. The way business is running, if you're happy to be a middle player and the way things are happening, they should be fine. Other thing is get hard facts about soft issues. It can no longer be employee engagement is poor or stuff like that. Most people do employee engagement survey, I'm sure all of you do as well. But you don't get an honest opinion of the internal employee engagement surveys because people willy-nilly know that you will come to know who, who wrote that uh, the boss is an idiot and uh, we will just figure it out and take care of him or her. So let's say if you have an employee referral program, how many referrals come, how many people refer? If you refer your brother, sister, husband, wife, friends, and so on, you feel strongly about the company. So what's your net promoter score? Let's say how much pride people take in being part of you. How many people, let's say we put on Yammer our design, we're designing a new module, how many people actually comment on Yammer? That's a level of engagement. When the programmer doesn't have any job to comment on design, somebody in aviation doesn't have any job to comment on an account payable screen, but they do. So they are engaged, many of them are not engaged, so you know which people are engaged in the company, which people are disengaged. It doesn't really matter what happens in the company, I really don't care. Some people really care about every cause that happens in the company and they want to contribute in some manner or the other. So how, how to use various ideas. Initially when we said show all your designs on Yammer, people say they will be copied by competition. I said it's okay, we are so much behind in competition, it doesn't really matter if they copy ours. So when we are ahead of them, we'll worry about, you know, they will copy from us or not. So let's go ahead and put it there anyway. And who is worried about us? We are such a small company, they're worried about us, which is good news to us. So this is the Yammer thing, if you see this particular company, fortunately it's not us. If you see the confused line, which is a red line, a lot of people confused in the company. And if you see the light blue line, a lot of people are sad in the company as well. And uh, there are not many people who are excited about what is going on in the company. The graph is declining very rapidly. So that tells you a score. So if you people use Yammer, you can try some tools to do that. And uh, people who are technically, or your IT department is technically well qualified, you have sentiment analysis libraries available in the market where you can just the sentiment in your company in various forums and media. There's a company in uh, Bangalore called Belong, which can also tell you what is your engagement score from various other channels. There's a new company come up in the area of data analytics for HR. I think it's Belong, if I'm not mistaken. There are many other companies. So if you want to know what is happening in the HR analytics field, you can get in touch with Prakash. He can tell you what is the new, latest trend in the market. <laughs> What is the informal interaction and depth of interaction amongst employees? So this is trust sphere. This is a tool used to see the metadata about interactions. If you were to notice on the outside are the people who are your uh, employee. One is in sales, second is in sales, third is in customer service, and uh, general counsel, the legal person, the marketing person. There is, they're interacting with the client, but they're not interacting with each other. There's no line of communication between each, each other that is going on. If you see on the right side, I think Larry has fairly thick lines going on with uh, client, and the client is also responding. If you see your customer service, customer service is getting a lot of emails, but you're not responding back. Your line is very thin. So you know a lot of stuff that is going on in the company, whether your people talk to each other, whether they share information with each other or not, whether they respond to customer. One of the salesperson we notice wrote totally five emails outside the company in a month, and not a single response back from anybody. Okay, that is, firing the person becomes a, lot, becomes a lot more easier. So if you're running various insurance company, people are there, so if you're running 10,000, 15,000 people network, you really know what's, what the hell is going on. Whether people are really working or not. So this is uh, trust here, about metadata. You may 
say that it's unethical or something. So it's a metadata level. It doesn't show the individual transition. It shows you the relationship that was there. If you want to use it, you can use it up to you. But these are the kind of tools available. Since the topic was HR analytics, I said, let me introduce you to some tools that exist in the market and some we use ourselves. So this is uh, Mr. Tripathi's uh, balance scorecard as the HR head in their company. When he, uh, incidentally, he, is, he did all his life sales. He moved to HR only one year back. And uh, once he was told that this is the only rating on which he will me be measured, the food quality in the company has improved dramatically. It is possibly <laughs> the best food that you can get, the best coffee that you can get. The Coffee is because you like it yourself. Yeah. The yoga, the Zumba classes, all that is uh, happening in the company. He convinced me we need to pay 50% of every meal cost of an employee and all that kind of uh, stuff. So he's busy changing anything and everything that will help him improve his, uh, his score. And he forces me to sit whenever I'm there in office between 8.30 and 9 a.m. at the public cafeteria and meet anybody who wants to meet me. So I'm available to any employee who wants to meet me between 8.30 and 9 a.m. every day that I'm in office, which is rare. I'm not in office many days. Let's say we have measured employee engagement, not using a survey like that, but using some of those three, four questions that I asked. But what's the value? Can you assign any value to this? To this? Uh, this is the value assigned by Best Buy. Best Buy ask its people to respond to customer complaints on Twitter and including their customers to solve any other customers' problems that they have. That's a saving they've documented. That is something people do outside office. You know, what we told when we were hiring, we didn't have money, any money in the company, now that we have some money, we don't say that. But when we had no money, when we were hiring people like Prakash and all to join them, so we said we can pay you some salary we can give you a dream of stock appreciation to an extent that you can have a yacht next to Larry Ellison. Uh, and we will keep you in a lifetime high. So free supply of cocaine, that is, you know, the work will be such that the slogan in the company is, thank God it's Monday. So if you can't stay at home and you're dying to come to work, that's what the culture would be. If that's what attracts you, that's where we are. Otherwise, if you want just salary, go somewhere else. But now he's getting all three. So since, you know, topic was HR analytics, I said, let me just come back to it. So HR reporting is the most mundane, basic hygiene function. You should be able to produce pay slips. You should be able to produce statutory reports. You should be able to answer a simple question, number of joining, number of hires, number of female employees, number of male employees, number of masters, PhD, engineers, basic hygiene question that any reporting require able to produce Form 16, et cetera. HR effectiveness measures, how many days it takes to fulfill a position, how many resume, this thing, what's the cost of an average hire, various channel, channel-wise breakup of hiring, and so on and so forth. People optimization is tactical uh, benefit that you can uh, deliver. And business optimization is the ultimate layer in which you can make a massive difference to the business outcome through predictive analytics, through various ways by which uh, predicting what is going to happen, and so on and so forth. So people optimization can be, what's my uh, succession readiness index? That is for every position, how many people may qualify? If I, my index is three people qualified for every position that I have, it's a very good index. If I have one, 1.5, then I'm in a danger. I mean, I don't have enough talent pool that is available in the company in case somebody were to leave, and so on and so forth. So these matrices are also available. These are available in an article uh, written by Burst, is it? Dave Ulrich can burst, authorities on the topic. All three, four articles should be available with us. You should take, it gives a list of reports, outcomes in each of these areas. Uh, you can see what is relevant for your organization, what your IT systems will let you implement, because you need to have data to be able to do many things. And, uh, and I won't run through what, I, what each one of them is, but there's a fair bit of detail available, details available. So in case anybody's interested, can be in touch with Prakash from the company and he will be able to share with you those public reports. These are public reports. You can even give them the names of what the reports are. 
and also you know uh, since you are on the topic we just can't resisting example taking example of lehman brothers because this is a case study taught to us by the harvard professor so this is uh, when a new hire joins the performance dips and then it starts coming to the existing employees after a period of time what the figure out was the blue line represents the male employees and the green line represents the female employees it's a very celebrated case study in harvard so lehman brothers you know use this harvard study and raise raise themselves from less than 20th ranking in the analyst position to first ranking by hiring horde of female executives and the star executives from other companies and uh, making them become productive very quickly so this is a very celebrated case study uh, harvard case study what is the name of the case study ragu hiring of a star say very celebrated case study you can see it anywhere who wrote professor boris professor boris and another professor you can study the case studies about 30 40 pages it's one of the best case studies in hiring a star very very engaging case study and uh, almost every harvard course covers this case today i won't go into the detail of this this case study should be available on the web hiring of a star so turnover prediction you know if you want to know how many people will leave so your employee engagement survey says the satisfaction level is 3.8 at the time of exit somebody says the satisfaction is 2.7 so let's assume 2.7 is the benchmark at which people will leave and just see how many teams how many sub groups have this level you will know what's the chances that some attrition will take place there so which department there are more chances and so on and so forth of people leaving and you know we talked of hr taking a seat at the board so in my in our particular case you know the only role is that of a hr finance role is just to make sure we are not in trouble with auditors and the shareholders so because if you're going to build a great company you need to hire some very great people and to hire very great people you need to have a great culture and uh, for that to happen is primarily hr role so uh, i spend a lot of time we sit together my finance department sits on another area i rarely see them but i spend a lot of time with the hr uh, people so for us this is most important but in your profession you will have to be able to show return on investment and employee cost for example if you are going to give increment and you are going to increase your company's wage bill by 8% while well, your revenue is likely to decrease by 3% then your ceo is in trouble with the shareholders your cfo is in big trouble so you have to as hr to devise strategy as to how the return on investment will increase while the deserved people get the salary raises and if as a company you want to be in innovation area now like Vishal Sekhar is discovering they need to innovate. You need to measure your revenue from innovation, and so on and so forth. So if you are the HR head in Infosys, you will need to worry about how to hire the people who would want to join a company whose image was they do outsourcing work. Outsourcing is as boring as it gets, you know. So how to get those people, the nerds, who will join your company, who will make it innovative, who will make it cool, who will create intellectual property. and uh, the biggest risk is talent people may not realize it but the biggest risk that can hurt any particular business hp is a prime example the board fumbled for about 10 years with so many ceos including scandals and then one of the board members became the ceo so you know, the talent is a big problem so if you don't have plans in place succession in place right people in place you could be in deep deep uh, trouble and if there are three candidates like it happened in case of g or five candidates for the ceo job the moment jack emelt became the ceo the other four left so you have to take care of that if you have a good pipeline of succession planning one wins the other will leave so that's the end of my presentation so please feel free to ask any questions thank that you, you may have thank you thank you okay Okay, we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, I wonder if we might have some more lights on, if that's possible. Okay, we'll open up for any comments. Uh, we, while people make up their mind, a lot of what you've spoken of um, 
and I think I know what your answer will be, but I still must ask it, presumes A, a very digitally savvy employee, and um, do you believe that some of what is going to be brought into play, trust fear, et cetera, et cetera, lends itself easier to new